<laughs> so no, you're going to have to probably put that in the chat. Yeah, that's what I was about to do just now. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so here we go. Share. Um, all right. This is the team info link. Software is so wonderful. All right. All right, leave me alone. All right, uh, you want to start off here, D? Uh, sure. Uh, welcome to April's um, UX chat. Um, so today, because I'm moving, so I'm packing and purging and doing all that not fun stuff at all. Um, <laughs> and last time, um, I think people like were talking you into this, right, Dave? I think I think that's how this happened. Was people were talking Dave into um, this talk? He's like, "Cheers!" <laughs> so um, I will let you um, take over and uh, conquer. All I've right. made you well, co-host. Oh well, all right then. Let's see if I can share this. Uh, I've got, and I swear it's it's short, and it actually has some really usable information in it. Uh, along with like five rules on how to integrate uh, AI into, uh, let's see, and where's my little share button here? Come on, come on, where's share? Ah. This damn thing, all right, come on, come on. It's a, it's a presentation, and I swear that it's here. Ah, there we are, come on, ha ha, that's the one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd know him anywhere. Okay, so... Uh, here we go. And it's integrating AI into our product design processes. You're seeing can this? everybody else see all of it? It seems like I'm I can only see like a like three fourths of it. It's yeah, cut it off. looks clipped, cut off. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see, is that better? No. Nope. Sort of? No. Okay. There was no change. There is no change. All right. Let's stop. Stop the madness. Stop the share. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's try this again. Technology is our friend. I swear it really is. All right. Let's try sharing this. Wow. My cursor is doing crazy ass shit. All right. Uh, let's share the screen again. You guys still seeing this? More or less. Share that. Okay. How about that? Yes. Yes, Perfect. we have Thank it. You. All right. So it's into our product design processes. We promise this is done by and for real human beings. Um, yes. Uh, basically, let's acknowledge the... And by the way, are your faces showing up on the shared screen? I've got this stupid little, like, you know, uh, thing on my screen with, like, all of you here. Is that better? Are you are you guys seeing yourselves? No. We're, well, we see ourselves no. over on the on the... On the side. Okay, fair enough. All right, I just want to make um, sure it wasn't missing it. We could do view options and make sure that eh, that's yeah. we're good. All right. Well, okay, we're 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 good. All right. If we're good and we're seeing the content, then that's cool. Everybody but else okay can... besides me? Yep. Thumbs are counting Thumbs up. going okay. up. I like this. All right. So <laughs> um I know that we're all kind of sick of the construct with every con conversation of noun plus verb plus AI and every other sentence here. Uh, we are at the up top of the hype cycle for AI right now. Um, my prediction for what's going to happen uh, in 2024 is that in 2023, every single company out there had to like try to sprinkle some magical AI fairy dust onto their company and their product uh, just to like try to keep their stock price up. Uh, in 2024, everybody's under an enormous amount of pressure to actually take the AI uh, and put it into practice. They're like, you know, we invested all this money and it. By God, we're going to start seeing some return. So to me, uh, 2024 is going to be the year of AI product liability suits um, because a lot of this is kind of ill thought through. And so that's the point of today, uh, because whether we like it or not, 
uh, as designers, we're probably going to get called on to work with AI, integrate it, use it in some way. And there may be some upsides to this if we use it right. And I'll get to that at the 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 end of this little thing. Um, but for now, whoops, uh, there are some problems with LLMs. Uh, there is, because of where we are in the hype cycle, uh, people in management at companies have heard all this hype about AI everywhere. And they're kind of looking at it as this universal tool that will just make everything better. As we say here, uh, CEOs are like, awesome, I fired my entire staff. How quickly can the AI start diagnosing medical disorders? Woohoo! Um, the problem is, is that AI is not there yet. Um, I ran across this one recently. There was uh, last week ISOJ, the International Symposium on Online Journalism. And there the journalists were really engaging with, okay, what does AI do? Can we actually rely on it for anything that's mission critical? Uh, in some cases, you can assign it to do things like, you know, you take a picture of a shelf of books and the AI can read all the titles of all the books, recognize them from the photo that you have there and then organize them all into a list. So you can see what kind of materials that you have. It can do things like that when you have it in a narrow space with options. Unfortunately, there are these hallucinations that it has like this one here with the train wreck in Ohio, where if the firefighters had followed the instructions of the AI, they would have destroyed and obliterated the entire town. Um, the other ones that may be much on our minds is that we're starting, yeah, exactly, I see heads nodding. We're starting to see more and more stories about how AI getting stuck into the hiring and recruitment process is a real pain in the ass. Uh, it's not, when it's used as a way to replace human decision making, again, AI isn't there yet. So here's something that I'd like to show you all that I think is really nice. Uh, Dove, which if you guys have seen in the past, Dove has done these really nice campaigns about what's the nature of beauty, what's, you know, what can we expect uh, in the the cultural memes. And I'm sure you've seen also the the AI generated things where they ask AI to, you know, do a picture of an executive and it's a white male at a desk do a, a picture of a palestinian and it's somebody with like a rocket launcher or a suicide vest anyway let me see if i can get you guys to and let's get rid of full screen exit the full screen all right let's see this here this is dove's site for it and they have this very nice video here looking at how is it that we can retrain AI? And you guys are seeing this video playing? No. No, no you're not. Shit, what are you seeing? Just the regular screen. Yes. Oh, bugger. Stop this. All right. Let me see if I can get this to stop here again. Yeah, there we go. Share that one. Okay, you've seen it now? Okay. Yep. All right. So this is Dove's attempt to say, because artificial intelligence is going to be generating all this online content, what are the initial effects of this? And these are things that AI has done. And what's the effect of having this kind of AI response? This is what AI thinks a gorgeous woman should look like. Does it have audio?
So that to me is a company that's doing something intentional. They that's that's a design response to this. All right, you seen back with the the PowerPoint now? We good? Yeah. All right. So here's the philosophical question uh, that sorry. Dove is kind of uh, yes. What do you got? It's it's getting cut off, like before. What? Ah, you little rat. Sorry. All right, let me try this again. <laughs> Once again, I think the computers are... are uh... They know we're talking about them. Exactly. All right, how's that? Better? Yes, thank you. All right. The philosophical question, uh, as we're building AI and as AI is responding to us, this is a machine that plays us, Um. This quote here made me think that it's not really doing things we're asking for. Uh, it is changing itself in the expectation we're going to learn to ask for the things that AI can do. Um, and uh, wrap your head around that. And I'm using these little images from, you know, iRobot. So here's a question for the peanut gallery. Um what have been your experiences with, with AI? I mean, I think by now, just about everybody is, is anybody in technology has gone to chat GPT or Bard or any of these and tried to use them. Um, one of the things that, and, and uh, as I say here, the natural human response is to think that the computer knows the answer, but there's an entirely new and interesting train of thought that's saying that psychologically what we're doing here is we're all in this mass cold read type experiment. Uh, and I've got this link here. I can share it with you, but it's basically like a cold read where we are fooling ourselves into thinking that somehow the computer can read our minds and come up with the right answer. So anyway, what have been your experiences in using ChatGPT or MidJourney or any of the, the other things? Anybody here got some some uh, good use cases of this? So in my experience, um, and I can give a use case for this, it, it responds. So a learning language model, in my experience, is what it sounds like. It is a model that learns um to think the way language creators and users think and therefore responds the way that humans respond to things so um it takes levels of abstraction it uses sort of the mass cognitive general approach even though the mass general approach is not unique in any specific way um and also just like humans do it lies it fills in the <laughs> blanks where it has no data, just yeah. like most of the humans we experience do um, with whatever it can make up. So a real use case of this was I was at uh, Quest Diagnostics. I put together a proof of concept. Uh, I built a proof of concept for a chatbot that would scan the test directory of Quest's tests. Say that five times fast. The... Mm -hmm. Um, and then you could ask it questions about the tests and it would give you answers in theory based on what it read in those, in that like site map of pages that have all the information about quests tests. Um, the challenge was that mm -hmm. it first tried to answer it using what it thought it knew and then went to the actual resource to fill in the gaps. And if what it thought it knew was wrong, that didn't matter. 
Um, just like with most humans, right? If we think we know something, we answer with that knowledge and then we go to a resource to confirm it if necessary. Um, so it has the same flaws that relying on humans has, except when you ask it to then refine its answer based on solely the information and solely the research or solely the data, it, a human will do that because they have to, or they will get fired or be reprimanded. An LLM will not. Hmm. So we're running into limitations of how the LLM is, is designed to work. We're going to get to this. And, and that's a, that's a really, that's, that's a really valuable insight. Ben, what do you, what have you been uh, doing with AI or, or are you just hands off with the whole thing? I, I mean, I've been, doing my best to avoid it on for multiple reasons but I, I would piggyback on the the it's disturbingly human in how confidently they will lie to you as, as yeah. uh Aaron had said in that like you you ask a person they're you know there's hopefully a good chance that they're like I'm not sure I'm not too confident about this but here's what I think versus the human nature is we will trust a computer because oh the computers are right they, they know what they're doing but they they just again they're very confident in what they do or don't know um yeah so that's been a challenge it don't get me wrong they're fun to look at some of the, the <laughs> image generation ones or the other tools that pop up like but, firefly and, you know, and, and uh, whatnot well just any of it i've even started you've started to see ai figma plugins that are like we'll get you 80 oh, percent yeah. of the way there but you know with with something and it's like that i there is potential for a use case there but i always go back you know the <laughs> the leftist in me is like wasn't weren't computers and ai wasn't this supposed to make our lives easier so shouldn't a company that implements ai be like okay we're going to keep our people we're just going to work less or society in general we're going to have less work but it seems like all of the ai tools that are coming out are instead saying we're going to replace people and yeah. um, that's always my concern. You know, it's like we want the Star Trek model where we get space utopia with smart systems. But unless we're careful with a lot of these, it feels like we're going down the uh, the Blade Runner, the space dystopia. <laughs> or bored. So. Premiere Pro just um, <laughs> added um, AI into their video stuff, right? So yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and not, of course, everybody knows that I was at IBM, right? So back. In, back when I started at IBM, you know, the marketing had oversold, Watson. you know, what Watson could do. Yeah. And everybody would ask me, hey, is Watson an oncologist? And I'd say, Watson isn't even pre-med, right? <laughs> so <laughs> well, it's like, we, what, what um, was I, I, wor I, I worked on a tool called um, Watson for Genomics. And mm -hmm. the, our cancer biologist was the one that... Um, Everything that she got from the machine learning, et cetera, um, she would correct it and then put it back through. So by the time we went live, she had pretty much uh, taught it what was correct. Which is essentially what we were doing in Mayo when we were working together right. there, right? That's what Decision Advisor was intended to do. It was essentially really human program logic that was then being used to evaluate clinical decisions and clinical yeah. scenarios. It really does feel like the modern or the current usage of AI, just what it should be or attempts to be is just, oh, these are what we would have called algorithmic learnings or other things, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. It's just, we're taking some of the training out of human hands perhaps and trying to put it into an automated system, so, but. Yeah, yeah I, said, they're, I spoke they're very clearly, pessimistically I, the one thing I will say about the, like, they're coming for our jobs. True. But, like, the World Wide Web also came for a lot of yeah. jobs. Yeah. And yeah, but it also created as many, like, as many jobs, if not more, than it eliminated. Um, yeah. And I think yeah. this will be the same. Yeah. It's any, just the job. I mean, there will be jobs. They will just be different. Um, I'd any like to hear from Des. Oh, sorry. Who did I talk um, over? I apologize. Was that you, Aaron? Or Ben? Sorry, Ben. What were you saying? I didn't mean to talk uh, over you. Um, I, was, I mean, yeah, a, any massive technological change is going to have a, a big shift and disruption in the 
yeah. you know, the, the economy and the market. I think here the danger is they're trying to make that shift to trusting the AI so quickly without realizing or understanding what its actual limitations and capabilities are that we're going to be stuck in this limbo of we have AI systems that don't really work, but we've gotten rid of our workforce yep. that would actually thinking it's perfect right out of the gate. <laughs> or Dude, you guys are you're like preview of coming attractions. You guys are awesome. <laughs> no, I'm or we're gonna put the people here. out of work who are creating the resources that would actually be used to train and make these AI systems better. I want to hear from um I wanted to hear from Desi. Hi Desi on uh you know so you know you do an awful lot of consulting what are what are you telling um the your 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 folks about ai uh good question um it's a good tool has great potential um it can be used needs it needs to be monitored so it can't just be left to roam around unadulterated, uh, unadulteredly, that's not the right word. Yeah, yeah it is the right word. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, without any constraints, any restrictions placed upon it within an organization, basically, because as far as I know it, any consumer or commercial based AI, I'm not talking about the AI that nobody knows about, I'm just talking about the AI that the public is aware of, right? So is mostly generative. Um, and that is based on information that already exists in the web or information that already exists somewhere um, in a data house or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And all it can do is grab that and generate new information or tailored information that combines all of that into something else, right? And that's all it is. It's almost like, in my mind, taking a jigsaw, rearranging it, making sure the pieces still work together, go, here you go. Here's a new jigsaw puzzle. And that's basically what I tell people at conferences in terms of the power of AI. It has a tremendous power to do that, but the difference is, is that it can do it way more quicker than a human can when it comes to that specific process. Will it replace jobs? Most massive technolo technological jumps generally do. Um, someone mentioned the World Wide Web. Yes, some people did, of course. I, I, I like to I, I like to always map these significant climatic shifts to other parallels that we see in life, right? Which makes mm -hmm. it so much easier. For example, let's think of Madonna. May not be everyone's favorite music artist, but that's not the point. <laughs> but how many times did she reinvent herself? What about Sigourney Weaver? How many mm. times did she reinvent herself within the world of acting, right? So things changed. Therefore, people do different things. And I was watching an interview um, of Halle Berry on, on Hot Ones. If anyone watches the Hot Ones, they eat the chicken wings. It's still a big thing in the UK. It is of interest. So and um, what Halle Berry said was that like 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you'd go on a talk show and you'd actually have an interview. Whereas now you go on a talk show and you're eating chicken wings, you're eating this, you're doing this, you're playing this activity. You have to do all of these weird things that the public want you to see. So so, so the public shift has changed in terms of what they expect from these people that they may admire, follow by tickets to watch or whatever the case might be. So it's really interesting seeing what the new expectations are. And because of that, these people have had to reinvent themselves to stay relevant. Mm. So what happens for people that don't have jobs? Of course, that's a fear. Well, we would have to do the same in principle, find ways to reinvent ourselves so we still remain useful and valuable in the workforce if that's where we wish to remain. But if we want to say, you know what, I'm done, I can retire, I'm fine, I've had a nice life, I don't want to try and relearn something else, then do what you need to do because everybody has the, everyone's a free moral agent. And that's basically what I'm saying to people. So instead of saying, I'm playing the victim, I'm out of a job, or well, do something about it. You know, do you know what I mean? You, you're not tied to the floor. You're not tied to a room. This is not the Saw movie. You know, we have the ability to make choices and, and change stuff. 
So just because other people, are engineers, are doing great jobs in changing the world with AI as it as we as we potentially know it, um, we can change with it too in whatever way we see fit. And I think that's probably the part that humans sometimes tend to miss on a human level. That's what I tell people, depending on the audience. Sometimes I go into that or where we talk about the life space and how people can change their mentality and their mindset. And other times I just keep it strictly about the worth technology in the industry. So hopefully that answers the question. No, that's pretty good. And plus you brought in both Madonna and the Saw movie franchise in the, in the same discourse. And, <laughs> and you know, props for that, baby. That's, that's, <laughs> That's some good cross-referencing there. Uh, how many here have that. heard about the concept of model collapse? Do you know what that is? Uh, ben does. Ah, uh, you little cynic, of course. I read enough um, nerdy sites. Of course I've come across it. Damn skippy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, model collapse is what's happening to AI uh, in much the way uh, that you just said where it's no longer just scarfing up all the human created content. It's scarfing up the AI generated content that was made off the human generated content in this endless cycle of pulling in, you know, the AI generated spam that we're all seeing all over the place. And what happens is if there's an error in there, that error just gets propagated and propagated and it pollutes the entire database. Um, where the devs are dealing with this right now is there are bad actors that are basically sticking malware into the training data set so that when you use AI to, uh, to try to write some of your code, you're going to get a couple of little malware snippets stuffed into that, that, uh, that, that code there. Um, the analogy, uh, how many of you here know who Corey Doctorow is? Uh, Ouroboros. Yes, exactly. Alvin, snake swallowing its own tail. Uh, Cory Doctorow, a uh, science fiction writer of some note, uh, talks about how, in the best case scenario, what AI looks like is the centaur model. We're the head, and then the body is the AI doing the work, and we just, you know, we direct the AI to do the work. What we're seeing right now is that's kind of flipped around. Uh, the AI is directing us to do the work. And so what the devs are winding up doing is they're seeing line after line of code being spat out at them because LLMs and, and AI is really good at generating shit really fast. But as anybody knows who's stared at a computer screen for too many hours during the day, hello, um, after a while, your eyes glaze over and you're supposed to be the human in the loop catching the errors. But if you're getting enough stuff spewed at you, you ain't. So this this is kind of one of the problems that we're we're seeing here. Uh, the this was much again uh, being discussed by journalists uh, last week about how do we deal with this avalanche of AI generated deep fake type stuff when it's coming at us faster than we can debunk it. Do we build another AI just to like you know beat on the the first AI? Uh, if so, do we really need to be here for this? Um, one of the, the promising things that, that was name checked was, and this has been something that I've seen with great annoyance, influencers, quote unquote influencers, because influencers have a connection, a human relationship with their audience. And it's a human one-to-one -one human type feeling type thing as opposed to the traditional media, which is top-down, command and control, we talk, you listen, kind of model for information. And having a more human connection there is something that apparently the younger generation, it's one of the reasons why they're turning to influencers. Anyway, let us let me go back to what it was I was going to be showing you. Come on here. Dun, 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 dun. And back to the robot battle scene that I was showing you. Very exciting. All right, so before we start the exercise, here's where I'm going to get to brass tacks and actually share some stuff with you that, you know, you can write down these five little steps. Uh, and this is coming out of Geolab in Stanford. Uh, and they wanted to see, okay, what is the effect if we can take AI and put it into the creative and innovative process of problem solving? What's the effect of this? And so they're like, okay, we're going to have two teams, one with AI, one without us europe so 
the process was let's get everybody to like ideate and just try to create oops hang on a second uh real world business problems so they were like okay everybody go off and figure out solutions to the problems share them with the group brainstorm off of it then submit and i'm sorry these aren't high design slides i kind of ran out of time otherwise i would have made these look pretty all right so when we look at sticking AI into our creativity, and you guys can use this if you're getting put in a vice to try to use AI to crank stuff out faster. And that's that's one of my goals here, to arm you guys up to push back a little bit against these giant trends that we're, we're kind of getting sucked into. So yeah, you're going to get more output, more ideas. There are fewer D ideas, fewer bad ideas, but there's more B grades and there's fewer A grades for the for uh, what happens when you get AI involved in the creative process. Because AI is designed to choose mediocrity. You're not going to get, you know, just completely galactically stupid things, but you're also not going to get the, you know, break out of the box, Steve Jobs type innovative insights, because that's not what AI is, is, is doing, right? It's, you know, just basically a bot that's looking at a big spreadsheet and it's choosing the most popular answer. And so when you use AI in certain ways, you're going to get, you're not going to like, you know, blow up and get something stupid, but you're not going to get something, you know, brilliant either. You're going to get something that's like, eh, it's good enough. So to Ben's point earlier, and this is a fancy word, Einstellung effect. Ach, it is from the German. Uh, it's basically what you were saying there, Ben, that, that people are trained to like accept the, the, the thing that comes out of the box. Um, we think that, that the computer has some kind of knowledge, some kind of insight that we, we don't have. Um, and... The problem is, is that people that are using AI start to think that it's making them smarter. The AI enhanced team that was being used in this, this experiment was like, well, we're better than the regular humans. Ha ha. Um, as they say, that confidence was misplaced. The results indicated otherwise. So here's an example for you, the way to, to wrap your heads around it. If you ask an AI to complete this sentence, I bark like a blank. The AI will always choose dog because that's the most popular answer to complete the sentence. They're not going to come up with something out of the box and creative like seal or drill sergeant or coyote. I bark like a blank. The AI is just going to go middle of the road all the time. All right. So here's the five rules for integrating AI into design. We're going to have to use it. It's it, People are going to ask us to use it. And here's a way to do it so that you get good results. Uh, first one here, specific queries. Um, not, as it says here, how do we improve our customer journey? Um, get more specific with it. Like it says here, uh, we got an onboarding process. It's 10 steps for changes we got to make to boost completion and retention. The more specific we can get with the AI, the better off the, the uh, responses are going to be. And we'll get into like some other like nuances here to deal with those responses. Okay. Um, all right. Again, to Ben's point about over-reliance upon the machine. You know, we, we've all been conditioned to think that mechanical things are better. Um, if we're going to be doing brainstorming and trying to do ideation, do this before we bring in the bot, before we get polluted by these middle-of-the-road suggestions. Just do, do the crazy thinking first. And then you come to the table with it. All right. Um, again, don't treat it like an oracle. Uh, do your human stuff. Come back. And then here's the specific problem with Midwesterners. All of us good Chicago Midwesterners. We're too polite. I, I, I always hear my mom's voice in this like, oh, no, you don't want to be hurting the feelings now. Oh, okie dokie. People didn't want to critique the suggestions of the AI. They didn't want to hurt the robot's feelings. But it works better when we can say, no, that isn't good. Can you give me a better response? If you, you know, the, the, the bot isn't going to get its Well, I don't know. Maybe it will now. It's going to start yelling at you. All right. Next up, 
training and retraining, giving the bot context uh, with the training data set. A lot of times the training data set is too wide or it does not, or it's not wide enough. Uh, you have to get specific with it if you want it to solve a specific problem. Uh, so getting like, you know, here's what was tried before, here's what worked, here's what didn't work, and here's what everybody else is doing. Having those in your training data set will allow the bot to give you better results. And then last of all, when it comes time to judge this thing, get somebody who wasn't involved in the ideation in the creation process, and particularly somebody who wasn't involved with the AI to like make the final judgment. And then once you do that, then you train the AI and say, okay, here's how uh, we came to this final, final thing. This is what human beings think of as good. Add this to your training data set. So now you know more of what good looks like. And that's how we can start to improve it so that we don't get so many, you know, mediocre, mush mouth, you know, flavorless oatmeal designs. Okay. Any questions on any of these? You want me to go back on any of these in further depth, or is that good? Wow, this is this is lovely, mate. This is all nice gold dust. Um, I remember watching a, a, a post in the chat. I remember watching a year ago, and this guy is not even a designer, but he's regarded as probably the best tech reviewer. So um, he does go into some good depth when he looks into technology, looks into stuff. His name's Marquette Brownlee, MKBHD mm -hmm. for short. And a year ago, he published something uh, that basically um, echoes everything you've said. Oh. Uh, everything you said, David, is so on point. Um, I love it, mate. Um, are you able to share those slides? Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I've got them up uh, online. I will share the link to it here. Let me see if I can get the link. Do, 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 yeah, do, do, that'd be do, awesome. Do. Share, send a copy. Okay. No, don't. God damn it. <sighs> and if it's okay with you, with your permission, if there is any quote that I take from there, um, I'll credit it to you. <laughs> Woo, credit. I like to, uh, I, I pay it forward. Um, you probably see that I do a little standing up and talking at different places, but I like to pay it forward to where I got stuff. Perfect, man. Perfect. All right. Jesse's awesome. All right. Thank you so much. It is interesting. I'd be curious, you know, as folks interact with others on, in, you know, in related or, you know, our, our partners in crime in other fields, engineering, data science, et cetera, where the uses that they would bring some form of AI into it. It seems like they, a lot of what you were talking was, early in the ideation stage of one, do it yourself, but then use it to, you know, be a helping hand as it comes along. Whereas yeah. I feel like in a lot of data science, it's going to be pattern recognition or seeing things that humans could eventually see as well, but it will just take longer or whatnot. Um, the, the engineers, obviously we've, well, <laughs> was it GitHub? <laughs> Which one was Dev? The, the supposed AI engineer that has been now been debunked in the last week or two. Um, but regardless, you know, they all have their different uses and it feels like there are, there is a time and a place for the current levels of technology to come in, but it, it almost feels like it's at a different stage of the life cycle for each discipline. Yeah, very much so. Uh, and I think that one of the things that we as designers can maybe or should maybe do is because we have ideally the wider view of what's good what's bad and how can we design something to accentuate the good and you know minimize the bad uh that's why the this exercise of trying to figure out where can we where can we put ai into this uh to try to refine what it is we're doing um, one of the examples that that uh, came up last week was around the TSA, the the guys who are screening at the airports. They, because they're human beings, ooh, somebody wants to come on in. Come on in. I got it. Oh, you got, got it. it. I got it. Oh, you're so quick. Um, <laughs> the TSA agents 
notoriously miss like 90% of the guns, knives, and bombs that are in the carry-on luggage. But they're really, really good at identifying water bottles and shampoo bottles. They nail those. Yes, I know. It is a freaking joke. But when you look at this, and people like psychologists have made a really big study out of this, it's because what are they seeing 99% of the time with the passengers coming through? The water bottles and the shampoo bottles. So the human brain is like looking at like these carry-ons and they're like, oh, that's a shampoo bottle. Stop that. Oh, that's a water bottle. Got to stop that. Meanwhile, Mickey Mouse clock with dynamite tied to it goes through and they're like, you know, your brain just kind of glazes over because you get bored with it. And that's an area where having the AI in there, it doesn't get distracted by, you know, the passenger, you know, who's making a ruckus or the child that's crying or whatever else like that. The AI doesn't get distracted by the human things. The AI doesn't get bored at looking at the conveyor belt. If you can get the AI to, to recognize a little bit better the guns, knives, and bombs, maybe the AI plus the human will get better at finding the the bad stuff along with just the innocuous and yet illegal. And yes, Desi, what you got? Well, hang on. So um, I want to oh, make sorry. sure that Onyx had his hand up for a while there and then he oh, dropped sure. it. Um, Onyx, was there something that... Um, I was going to make a, a newbie question, uh, but uh, might as well. Um, when on the... Going back to the five... Uh, five yeah. uh, rules when you say go outside your team for final verdict that kind of sounds like a user test would that be something that uh that kind of like you know make it make the case that if you're gonna come with an ai bot for an application this is where you you train them on the results of your user evaluation it depends upon the application if if it's one where you can get the users in there yeah it's always best to verify everything with users. Too many organizations, as I know, we are all only too well aware. Uh, the most important parts of the design process are, are the beginning, you know, discovery and the mm -hmm. end testing. And yet those are the ones that you can't. Yeah, exactly. You can't get any of the organizations to commit to. If you can get them to commit to a user testing off of that stuff, aces. Uh, if not just having somebody who was not involved in the creation process or whatever uh, product design cycle there to be in there and come on in and look at the stuff that you've done, I, I think that that's a, a lower cost one. And then maybe have that person choose a couple and then take them off to user testing might be a, a good way to do it. It, so like it just I, depends like... on what your budget and time allows, brother. So like a heuristic, then, then like the next thing would be like a heuristic evaluation, but AI being so new, it's hard to find like an expert to kind of uh, evaluate this brand new thing. So I don't know yeah. what, mm -hmm. this is all fresh in my mind. We just discussed it last week in class. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I feel like I'm ahead of the curve. All right. So who, uh, Desi. Well, it, it feels like, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. No, 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 go ahead. Ben. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ben, you, you, you go ahead whilst I try to remember what it was. No, was my only comment was going to be, it's like, yeah, I think anyone, as soon as we integrate AI into our design process, it reinforces the need for that sanity check at the end to say, hey, did we actually come out solving the problem or did we just blindly follow this, you know, this box? So, yeah, whether that's user testing and outside force, it's just that that gut check to say, I mean, we should be doing this with our designs anyways, yeah. but with AI, I think it becomes even more important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, just in the last week or so preparing for this, I keep on seeing all these things. I put up a couple of searches. Uh, I see things cropping up like uh, in Australia, the supermarket chain had AI involved in the marketing. Uh, like, hey, look, yeah. you know, come on down to the supermarket and, and you know, try some new recipes. And the recipes that the AI came up with was putting mosquito poison into your roasted potatoes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's flavor mm. from him. And then the other one was mixing ammonia and bleach together to create aromatic water. Ooh, Ooh. Like delicious. Mm. Phosgene gas for the whole family. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, that's a, that's a pretty dramatic one. But any of yeah. the well, there was the Canadian airline as well. There was yes, 
you know, a couple of the on the automated like fast food ordering systems, whenever they've left their AI systems basically open, it's they're they're ripe for one spreading misinformation and or just plain abuse. Well, yeah, and, and my little sister who works uh, QA in this biotechnology lab, uh, they make probiotics. And they got acquired by this Danish company, and the Danish company wanted to get efficiencies. And so they put AI in charge of the production line. Robots do things faster, including making mistakes and not <laughs> catching things. And so what happened is they burned through a million dollars worth of raw materials in an afternoon that were oh. just, irri yeah, exactly, just yeah. irretrievably tainted. If you gave them to people, you'd make people deathly ill. AI and healthcare, we are going to have to put some big freaking barriers, safety guardrails up around this damn thing. Uh, I, I shudder to think what's going to happen with uh, AI with diagnostics. You're all familiar with the thing about skin cancer. Have you heard about that one? Well, which thing are you talking about? They were training. <laughs> they were training the AI to like recognize skin cancer. Yeah, and we so, did that back at IBM as well. So, you know, and you take an image, you know, you 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 take a photo of, mm -hmm. you know, something that looks suspect and it helps, you know, then you try and diagnose based on the shape and the. That part is great. Yeah. The problem was, is that a lot of the pictures that they were using for skin cancer because they're using as diagnostic tools had a ruler in there showing like how big <laughs> the the little. Yeah, exactly. Ben's right there with me. And so the AI is like, well, if there's a ruler in the picture, then it's skin cancer. But if there's not a ruler, then it's not skin cancer. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. False positives. And and the, the data set's getting polluted and then, you know, re-polluted because then you got something else using it over and over again. Okay. Uh, we are five minutes from uh, the end of time here. I've got that Moreau board set up. With uh, timelines, is everybody in it? I see Chris is in there. Who all is in this thing? Oh, my God. We've got a bunch of people in here. Aaron, yay, Onyx. All right. People's coming in. All right. So the idea was when we look at these various verticals, healthcare, I just chose healthcare, e-commerce, fintech, you know, government. Where can we bring AI in? Do we bring AI in at the beginning to help us narrow down and find ideas when we're we're just starting out uh, in the research phase? Does that is that where we need to do it in the workshopping phase in concept testing? Where do we find all the the uh, uh, the the benefits from AI, and how can we design these processes for getting it involved in product development? so that AI helps us and doesn't take us down these dark pathways that we all know. Um, and I, I recognize that we've got five minutes left and there's probably not enough time yeah. to do this. Do we want to kick this? Well, we don't have five road? minutes left because we always run. We, we never, we never make an hour <laughs> ever. We've never made just an hour and I are no. So I've only, I've only got a few minutes, but I can certainly comment on e-commerce since that's the industry. I work what you in. got? So um, I think there are several facets to this, right? So um, if you're talking about innovation, um, mm. I think AI, based on based on where it is right now, it's really hard to insert that into an innovation thing when you're trying to create something that's not on the market, um, because there's a process of understanding in uh, in my world where we manufacture Swiss Army knives. Um, what tools are useful and in what way would they use them and in what combination do they need them and what size would they like them so all these various different things but then there is generally one iconic shape generally speaking and then most swiss army now just get wider i think most of you guys know them as swiss army but they are called now victorinox by a rebrand um so that's basically that right but then here. where it becomes suit Hey, 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 my guy. <laughs> I'm awake connected. <laughs> yeah, I'm awake connected. You find a left handed one, man. I've been looking for that for years. They seized it at TSA and they won't give it back. Left handed hey, Swiss Army knife. Ping me your address on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Dylan, you would be my hero. Yeah, ping me or just something, Tim. So, so, but where it becomes super useful is where we can feed AI um, content that we already have, such as for the website, replatform, redesign, transformation product that just happened, went live, new website, all of that stuff. Um, anyone that's connected to me might have seen a few posts here and there. So essentially, we had to go through this process of migrating content from an old system that was monolithic to a newer system that was uh, headless, right, composable. So for the most part, making that change is fairly simple if you can figure out what, what needs to go where and all those stuff. But then there's the other side to it. So there were lots of parallels in this transformation. The transformation wasn't just technology. The transformation was understanding that there's a different brand position the organization had to take. And if anyone's familiar with the consultancy firm called Tantar, they use a psychology need state model. And that needs state model helps brands to understand where they need to be positioned based on who they're targeting and how consumers view their products or them as a brand or how they would like to be them versus how the brand is representing themselves. And then that's where you see the disparity. And then basically that consultancy says, well, these are the steps you could take to try and self-correct. So as part of that self-correction, that means that we would have to learn how to talk to our customers different, especially our target mm -hmm. audience. Right now, we don't talk anything like we're supposed to talk. The content's just rough. Um, it's a migration. So whilst the, whilst the UX and UI looks much improved, the content's still the same, right? So this, I mean, we're still going through that process right now where we're slowly rolling out improvements on different parts of the site. So, so there is that measure of expectation playing the long game in UX where you tell the business, well, just because we've got a new looking site and the journey is different, it's organic versus versus the top heavy before. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to get amazing results or be improved, sure, but we're not maximizing on their design because their design is optimized for better content. And we don't have better content, not yet. No. So that's where the AI kind of like becomes really, really useful of, taking what we have, improving that, targeting the this, this psychological new need state model that's been identified and saying, right, how do you reword, update, modify, change and generate newer content based on this new way of communication that will basically hit the subconscious of the user? That's, yeah, that's deep, dude. Uh, and I think... Sorry. You, no, no. <laughs> I think what you're reminding me of is that I think... The low hanging fruit, the one of the ones that's that's really going to be taken over, uh, and we're kind of seeing it now is uh, B two C communications. And I don't know how many of you have had you know been in the meetings where somebody just wants to stick a damn chat bot onto their homepage just because everybody else is yeah exactly everybody else has a chat bot on their homepage we got to put a chat bot on our homepage. Dude, are you not familiar with the fact that when people get robots on customer service, the first thing that they do, it's not even a volitional e reflex. They just start hitting the O button. We hate chatbots. Why are you doing this to us? But no, uh, marketing communications is going to be one of those places, I think, where we're going to see a lot of AI. Um mm. To my way of thinking, the best way, and, and I'm starting to work with some clients on this, is, again, putting up guardrails. Um, AI, for personalization, AI can be really powerful. Uh, it can know what it is that you want or what, what you're dealing with and and come up with, with you know, some really tailored stuff uh, in healthcare. Like, hey, look, we noticed you came in and you had high blood pressure, here's some new recipes and here's a group of people to support you while you exercise and get better, blah, blah, blah. That feels nice. But an AI chatbot that's looking at you going, well, I noticed you're having prostate trouble. That's that's getting creepy. Uh, it's like that famous thing, uh, everybody familiar with the one that happened years ago with uh, Target, with their, their targeted uh, uh, little mailers that were arriving at the house? Does everybody know that one? Eh. They were well. Ben does. 
again. It, it was basically Target was sending out these mailers to the house, and this father called up and was like, how come you're sending stuff to my daughter to try to encourage her, a teenage girl, to go out and get pregnant? And then, like, a week later, he called back up to apologize and went, well, apparently there are things happening in my house I wasn't aware of. Because the AI robot knew that she was pregnant before he did. Again, that line between being personalized in a way that's convenient and personalized in a way that makes you feel spied on and that is creepy, that's good. That's that's where designy type people like us is going to have to come on in. Otherwise, this is just going to wreck. Uh, anyone else? Who else had their hand up? Ben, what did you have? I mean, I didn't, but I can. Um, I, I think in its current state, um, AI, my best use case for it, well, there, there's two. I think there's a good chance to replace a lot of busy work in the actual technical design files of, like, I build a lot of design systems. So you come up with your base styles or whatnot, and if I can tell it to just be like, hey, here's what I like, go give me some options for the rest of the design system in that sense. It's not necessarily a lot of creative work. I still have to review everything, but it is saving me some time. I think there's potential yeah. for a lot of grunt work, again, with the, I need to review it, like treat it like it's, you know, the newbie on the team who's never done any of this work you asked them to go do something great. They come back. You have to check everything, but you don't, you're, you're going to save yourself some time there. Um, I think as, as well as that to, I think there is still at any ideation stage of after you do some yourself, let's ask the systems to generate that bell curve of ideas for us mm -hmm. and say, Hey, where do our ideas line up in the realm of, what we've seen here. I think it's it's an interesting way of gut checking. Oh yeah, okay, these are pretty mainstream ideas. Or okay, here's our outliers. Are the outliers good or outliers bad? Um, and it's I think there's there's possibility there. I could easily see it being incorporated into a workshop environment where you've pre-generated some AI, you know, designs or concepts or whatnot, but you've kept them covered until folks actually come up with their own and then reveal as necessary or whatnot to keep the ideas going or keep the conversation going. There is potential there, um, but it, it very much, like for any of these fields, it's not ready to be hands off. It's very much AI as a way to flag something for your attention that you may have missed otherwise. Nice, the, the TSA type thing, like, hey, I'm flagging this yeah. thing, this thing looks to me it's not a shampoo bottle, but this thing might, might, you might not want to let it on the plane. Yeah. yeah right um, on, man. And it, it, you definitely have to pay attention to both. I mean, false positives are certainly bad, uh, but an over reliance on the systems opens us up to false negatives, which in, you know, in something like healthcare or TSA, you know, that's worse. So I think you can't remove that human element. Yeah. Yeah, I once uh, got, I was speaking at a conference and um, I brought my snowball mic with me. TSA, I almost never got on the plane that day. They <laughs> thought that thing was a bomb. They were sure that it was a bomb. <laughs> my dad visiting me from Wisconsin brought a couple of blocks of cheese and they they gave him a cavity search because they thought that was C4. Oh, my God. All right, just, Alvin, just, you've been I... quiet. Alvin, what you got for us? You're always, you're, you, you always have a great take. What you get, what, what you're thinking, man? I've been thinking that I've been uh, listening to two meetings simultaneously for the last hour. But... Oh, shit. Other <laughs> <laughs> ones over. <laughs> um, uh, some cases where I've used AI beneficially, I guess. Um, so a couple of years, like maybe a year ago, I was working on a project for a theater company and it's like more physical design, like uh, graphic design, this sort of thing. But it was really great to build assets, like the stuff that I would use, like a, a stock photo library to do, you know, it's like, oh, I need an apple for this thing, or I need a a deer turn it to the left, you know? So like, give me 
I was able to get like very specific about the kind of thing I was looking for, right? So it, it helped me build something faster. It gave me building blocks to finish something else. Um, and when I've used it for those things, it's you know been great, largely. But well, depends on what I'm trying to get it to build, right? But mm -hmm. for very basic things, the it, it works out well. And I think some of the other points, of the, like uh, never use it for data, like it's uh. Um, and I don't know, I've used it sometimes to brainstorm, right? Like, so like, oh, hey, I've got these, these tables, these controls, like, this is what I want them to do. Like, let's talk about how to, some different ways to structure this and get, you know, get a few ideas and then balance off those. You know, I've used it a lot as a jumping off point to finish something else. So it's, uh, we did, I recently had a conversation with somebody who, uh, had a client where they wanted them to use a chat bot for something where a chat bot was just makes literally no sense for their user group, you know, more of a developer exercise and like what's the fanciest thing you kind of throw at this. So I think just getting in front of those, but it, start, it sparked a conversation like, okay, well, what are the modalities can we use to communicate with people that might be a little bit faster? I, you know, it's like, I get what your aim is, but this is maybe not the way to go about doing it. So it's, uh, couple of things that immediately sprung to mind. Well, now, the, uh, I was going to ask, like, you are one of the, the cooler visual designers I've ever known. Uh, do you use mid-journey? Are you using Firefly? What are you using for, for uh, image generation? Uh, I've used mid-journey a lot for things. Uh, actually, let's see. I'm trying to hold it up on my camera. Ooh. It seems to do a little better job than Firefly, although Firefly has improved a lot. I really like its um, the AI features in Illustrator seem more yeah and functional. Some of the ones in, you know Photoshop I've played around with kind of a uh, background generative fill like yeah. that thing. It's like it varies greatly depending on what you're trying to tell it to do. Um, you know, again, I, I've used it to build textures for things, right? It's like, hey, I like, I want like uh, a paper weave that I want to use to lay on something else, or you know, that like it's really good at that kind of super, really hard to mess it up. <laughs> it yeah. it's not there are no super specific rules around it, so we'll probably be okay. So it's like, oh, I I need a I don't know steel texture or whatever, you know, spray for all that kind of stuff, um, and I also mirror kind of Ben's idea earlier, just some of the Figma plugins, right? I've been experimenting with some of those, just, hey, I need a basic design system. Here's some fonts, here's some colors, go nuts, and I'll check it out in a couple minutes. So yeah, it's very good for bro. It's that what review process thing. That is, that is key. Yeah. Well, does, did everybody notice what, what, the AI feature in Miro whenever you select something? <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Speaking what, of AI, it's right there. So it's I've, right there. I've used that glamping. Approach. Right on, man. <laughs> oh yeah, it was the, the theme was kind of a, a glamping themed gala, but I kind of wanted to do this hmm. old school postcard kind of thing, like those vintage postcards from like the like art deco era. It's kind of my inspiration. But it was great to like, oh like I'm trying to make I need a, a moose right now or because uh, yeah, I realized I had a Adobe stock subscription that I wasn't really using I didn't really want to pay for it to just use it for a little bit so and you're not a major movie studio creating movie posters and then just pushing them out regardless exactly <laughs> uh, if, if anyone hasn't seen A24 is getting some serious pushback for their movie posters for the Civil War movie that they came out with because all the posters appear to be AI generated and yeah. just don't make sense yeah <laughs> I didn't think we were allowed were I didn't think anybody was allowed to said, use that uh, Marvel got a lot of fact uh, too when they released that Secret Invasion series. Like yeah. the, oh, yeah. Yeah. the opening series was, yeah. Which was thematic to like, you know, the series. I was like, well, that's <laughs> kind of clever, actually. It's all about like, you know, like deception and looking yeah. like something that you're not, but it's kind of ugly. Yeah. I just find it funny when it's these major corporations that have huge budgets. It's like, you. Come on, you could have at least paid someone to at least check the images. 
and we pass we'll the sales directly on to our bonuses. So I've done like a bunch of contracts for local businesses that just need a website that's functional that gets the users the information necessary to be able to like go physically to their business, right? And yeah. and makes their business look professional. And for stuff like that, you know, they have paid for photography of their physical business, which helps. But if they need things that are like, um, well, and, and even I did it for just like a firm that does communications between like is helping specifically Native American tribes build out their telecommunications uh, technology and capabilities and and they just needed like banner images for this like they are a broker essentially between businesses he needed some banner images needed some iconography the icons I did myself but the banner images and some of the like stock photos it was easier to re to create what I wanted in mid journey than it was to actually um to actually just try to seek something in and then and then if you create it in mid journey you don't have to worry that some other business is the exact same image that's one of the other things that I liked about it was like if you use shutterfly or you use one of those there's a real chance that somebody else is also using it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you are just your business or whatever you're doing it for is seen as just redundant or repetitive or something. So. Yeah. Um, the, the, the images of happy office workers, high-fiving. I think that, that uh, uh, whoever shot that photo, uh, that one's everywhere. Right. Um, you know, maybe um, they'll be high fiving now from Mid Journey with twelve fingers, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> I'd yeah. take that. Um, yeah, like the entirety of the all of the. I can pull it up and show it. Um, but like all, well, you know, not the iconography, but like even just the imagery for this whole site. Like even, and I'll just show one. Okay. Um, I feel like we should be chiming in saying, show us, show us. Yeah. <laughs> so like, this is the business and it's just like, they just needed something simple and, but that, you know, looked professional and was sort of had this grandiose feel to it, but was showing sort of infrastructure connecting cities among places, you know, had this sort of futuristic feel to it. And, and this was, it was the most basic site. That's all they needed. And and this image I created in Midjourney in an hour. Um, it just took me some refinement to do, but then and then I used one of the upscalers to upscale it, and it worked. And it works perfectly for what this business needs. Yeah, the good enough. Yeah. Right. So. So yeah, I mean, and and like even just some of the actually all of these I think I drew, but the. Did, um, they, did you generate the uh, the icons with with uh, uh, an AI? No. So those I chose to. I did get some inspiration for some of them that way, but I didn't choose to to generate it that way. But even like this image, I chose to generate generate this way. So like there were definitely some things that I chose to do imagery for um, using AI. It was just a little bit easier. And to be honest, the, the whole purpose of this site is to know roughly what it is they do and have them reach out to the two people who are doing this brokering. So like the simpler, the better for their purposes. And it just needed to look very professional. And I feel like done, right? Yeah, it feels like a lot of these, that type of work that you know has driven the boom in design schools boot camps, et cetera, in the last decade or two, we could start to see, you know, a reduction in the overall demand for design work. The trick I feel is going to be, can we manage to strike the balance of how do we avoid, Dave, what you were referring with the, the model collapse of, we still need new good training data to come out. So we can't eliminate the professions completely but you need to find a way to still support the community, but enable folks to do and use the tools correctly. And I mean, that's above my pay grade, but it's, the, mm -hmm. 
that is going to be a challenge, I, I feel. And I'm wondering how long it is, or maybe we already see them before these AI companies just basically hire or have internal creative teams that their entire job is just creating training data. I mean, I know that they already exist, but specifically for design of like, okay, let's mm. constantly refine our training data on that. Mm. Prompt That's designers. Uh, if you don't mind me jumping in, it's super interesting, Ben. Uh, were you going to say something, Pete? No, I said, I, you know, I was just imagining new titles, you know, like prompt designers. Well, and that All has right. existed. Prompt engineers was, there was a spike in the, yeah. you know, that, that as a, oh, this is what I'm good at. And to some extent it's true, but it's, <laughs> we need the, you know, the design teams tackling problems in isolation from AI so that it can constantly get new data to refine itself on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And do you know, do you know what makes, do you know what makes it really interesting? Um, for, for me when I'm looking at AI is that I've recently been um, brought into not necessarily a task force, but an advisory board for my organization based on their re previous successes. Um, okay, give you some context, right? And maybe this gives newer designers hope as well. So they already knows this, but I'll make it like 10 seconds. Let's see, let's see. So I joined Victorian Ox. They recruited me to join them. They couldn't figure out a problem. I told them their problem's bigger. They gave me no money. So I said, I'll prove it and you'll give me a blank check. I did, they gave me a blank check. We now have a website that's new and we now have a new platform as in lots and lots of layers of technical architecture that's cost tens of millions of pounds. This is what I mean by a blank check. Mm. So think big, start small, deliver, repeat, simple process. That's how you win. That's how you mature UX, right? By creating that. And because of that, I'm here now. Uh, and actually, this discussion was today. Uh, me and another peer said, right, they, they said, well, we need you guys to help define what the future should be like for us when it comes to AI, how we use it in our production model how we use it for um, digital commerce and how we use it in other parts of the business. Um, there are gonna be constraints as always, such as IT and security and what they think or not. And this is Switzerland, so it's a different beast. It's its own world, literally. <laughs> so, uh, so you have to work within that. But Ben, it is interesting with regards to kind of like uh, what that future is going to be like, but it's it's for me it's exciting because I get to uh, I get to influence how a company interacts with AI, and when I mean influence, eighty percent of the decisions will be because of whatever I tell them to do or not to do. Yeah, which is kind of cool. When three and a half years ago, um, they had a really bad experience with someone who was. UX, but they they said they were UX, but they weren't, and that really burnt the company. And they were like, I don't know if we should trust these guys. But then someone else had a vision, and they said, No, 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 no. This that was that just a bad experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah it happens. And uh, fortunately enough, we've right that ship. So, so I'll be really interested to can continue to learn from you guys as you guys post stuff, share information, because all of that stuff is going to help me tremendously. Because this is just another thing on top of all the stuff I already do. Uh, that I have to try and get my head around. Well, yeah, and, and very much uh, it, it's getting down to the the idea of what is it the core function of a designer. I, I talked about it earlier. Mm -hmm. The way I see it is you look at a problem space, you figure out what good is, you figure out what bad is, and then you figure out what you can do to make more good than bad. Mm -hmm. um, and then along the way, you make it, playful and fun well that was the other thing interesting of of from the the journalism conference was about how much humor or playfulness really breaks through a, a lot right now uh, and that's one of the secret sauces that the the influencers have why they're taking over informing people as opposed to regular news organizations 
but that, that's a deeper conversation. And redesigning the news, redesigning the way we get information is going to be the task of, of, I don't know how many more years. And if you're looking uh, at what's going on, I, I don't go on Facebook now at all. I, I didn't realize that it's being overrun by AI generated images for creepy dudes. <laughs> there was a story recently about like how there's like these closed groups with tens of millions of guys who like looking at pictures of sexy flight attendants. Oh <laughs> it's completely off the rails. Uh, I don't know what the hell is going to happen with their business model now that so much of the content on there is just weird. But anyway, uh, I wanted to give some an opportunity for uh, Mark or Carolyn, who haven't said much uh, yet here, or uh, Sitara. Uh, any of you, do you, 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 you have anything that you want to add or, or kick around or have us yammer about? Um, uh, go ahead. Oh, okay, okay go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, was just, I was just I was just gonna say I you know I I'm I'm a UX guy and I I have been using um tools uh to help me in certain um parts of the UX process. For example, um you know analyzing uh user interviews kind of very, very sort of tactical things, you know. Um for example, when I'm doing wireframing, there are some really nifty extensions on kind of AI driven ones in Figma that will quickly crank out like 20 variations on a theme, save you a lot of time. And then you just kind of pick one of them, work with it, that kind of thing. So for me, it's more like about efficiency, mm. but I don't really use it for any sort of large. Like, Conceptualization. Yeah, yeah. Or don't design me a program, for example. But yeah. I do find that a lot of these tools can be very handy. Albeit sometimes they do generate a lot of crap. You have to kind of sift through it, but it, it helps. You know? mm. All right, Satara, what did you have? Um, okay, first of all, I'm not a, uh, I'm not an English uh, native speaker, so please accept my apology if I use <laughs> words not correctly. Okay, um, actually, uh, because I live in Iran, uh, so it costs a lot for us to use AI generated, you know, uh, things. So I uh, use free uh, features for me uh, as a non native speaker. So I use um uh for example chat gpt as my uh, corrector so mm -hmm. it helps me a lot yeah it helps me a lot to communicate better with people around the world or for example to correct my email when i want to email someone who speaks english and uh, also it helps me because i'm a product designer and it helps me a lot as a ux researcher so mm -hmm. i uh okay yeah uh, actually, um, I proceed and then I check it with ChatGPT, like the way you did, you mm -hmm. you showed us in your presentation. I just check it and see if there's any hidden aspect that I didn't consider, something like that. Nice. Yeah. That's that's very smart. I, I, I like that. And by the way, your English is better than <laughs> mine after a long day. Trust me. You're, you're doing great. <laughs> Sure. All right, Carolyn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thank you're you. very welcome. Carolyn, yeah. you there? You yeah, I'm here. Apologies for my my lack of face. <laughs> um, so as a qualitative, more of a qualitative researcher, um, I I yeah, I uh I am hopeful because it's not there yet, <laughs> but also scared because the richness of people's voices and stories, you don't really get that, you know, like you're on the bard and you get the facts. And then again, like, you know, kind of, we've talked about this, about kind of cross-checking or, you know, short of actually doing the actual research and you could read about stories and it's a different tone, right? It's a different, it's human. Um, whereas when I've used primarily bard, right? Chat, chat GPT or bard, um, it's just more factual. Um, which is good, you know, then you have to go back and kind of cross check things, you know, but um, I don't know. So I, I, I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, my job is going to be obsolete at some point, but for the companies that act value quality, it's, 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 it's okay for now. Right. No, so, no, no. I, yeah. I think if there's one thing that's emerging out of this, it's that the, the research is going to be the area that really 
is resilient because we, we need to feed more human facts and perceptions into the machine. Uh, if we just base it upon the, 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 the existing data sets, no, the, the part in the middle there, uh, you know, uh, the part that Mark was talking about of generating things quickly, that I think is where AI right now is excelling, you know, coming up with like, you know, 50 different iterations on what, what's the border radius on this button, you know, that. Uh, that that the AI can do, but but going out into the really real world and, and finding stuff, I don't think that I, no, Carolyn, you're you're in a great space. The other the other one is you know at the end of the funnel, the the testing, taking stuff and giving it to people and figuring out and making a human value judgment on it. I think that one's also going to be resilient. Uh, for the uh, did anyone right come now. up with anything cool in their mirror that they want to share? Sure. What do we got? I haven't seen. Oh, well, I've been simple. distracted by the wonderful conversation. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to come back around to, you know, like the, you know, playing back what we put in. Did anyone mm -hmm. think of, you know, something that they thought, oh, wow, this could be really amazing? Hmm. No. <laughs> uh, well, where I was thinking in healthcare on the ideation uh, workshop phase there of the thing that AI can do is crank out stuff way faster than people and be able to like tailor it. So maybe it, when we have the ideation workshops, we can have more tailored results so that we're not, you know, doing... Uh, an ideation workshop for a limited number of personas or users, but we can like open it up and have, you know, uh, something a lot more specific, a uh, 46 year old housewife in Ohio's take on what Ozempic should really be like, or, you know, what the problems are with, you know, uh, uh, hair care products. I don't know. <laughs> but basically that, that we get a little bit more specific AI allows us to get more specific in the workshops uh, and be able to feed things in and, and get a little bit more specific solutions out rather than having to have a person go through the drudge work of producing, you know, 80 different user journeys and personas. Well, maybe it can uh, be helpful in suggesting which activities for mm -hmm. a workshop that nice. depending on what you put in as an outcome i want yeah. this as an outcome what activities could i do to make sure that we get this outcome so i'm using the the regression analysis part of it there to say okay this is the the, the result we want backwards engineer me to uh, how to get to that path quicker yeah yeah. Um, I put in the, you know, the uh, possibly help with like lean model canvases mm. um, and user segments, like the, the upfront, the really high level stuff, mm -hmm. you know, based off of what we already know mm. about, you know, the product or the space or, you know, the, the users, um, you know, Aaron and I are very picky with personas, so just be aware that yes, you are. Now, who was it in, in under e-commerce? We're not picky about anything. Invite customers for co-creation. <laughs> who, who who came up with that one? That that's which one? Uh, in in e-commerce, uh, invite customers for co-creation. Onyx. That looks like Onyx. No, all right. No, that that one there. I think that 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 one has, uh, that 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 one has a, a, a some horsepower with that one. Uh, I think we've got that in uh, the AI in healthcare um, as hmm. well. I think. Yeah. Invite customers for co-creation. So whoever put it in, yep. put it in for everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had a good idea and and applies. Aaron, everything. was that you? Was not. <laughs> It does sound like me now. It does. <laughs> also, Wait, speak to Rue. I don't know. Um, are we talking? I don't know what that Russians? is. Yeah. Uh, are we talking to Russians? Are we talking to the element Rubendium? Um, 
<laughs> I don't know. Is it? Well, RuPaul. Not just kidding. <laughs> RuPaul. It's definitely RuPaul. So, talking to Ru- RuPaul. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you could do worse. I think we should consult the RuPaul on everything. Yeah, damn Skippy. <laughs> hey, on, on e-commerce, have have the folks started to see basically the sentiment sentiment analysis on product reviews? Like Amazon started pumping it out, where it's at the top of their reviews of customers like X Y Z and dislike yeah. X Y Z, or you know about a product, which I assume yeah. basically they have they're running a, a sentiment analysis system in there, but. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, they are. They are. We were looking at that, Ben, actually, um, as one of the things that uh, our CRM team wanted to initiate for product reviews on our website. So how could we create uh, more sentiment? How can we get smart with sentiment analysis and and understand how to um, properly take the insights from those reviews and then use that as an upcycle for product development and stuff like that? So uh, yeah, try, try which makes smart, sense uh, until you're in the in the Amazon space where most of their reviews are already being generated by spam bots. So you're feeding true. bad data into a potentially very good system, but because you're starting with crap, you're going to end with crap. Derby but it looks, very, it, it looks very authoritative. Yeah. <laughs> the machine so said documentation it, so it's be true. is what I I put in that. So that it's a be, uh, you know so Ben on. You know what you're, you know, saying my the, the documentation is going to have just a bunch of crap in it if I have it help with documentation. I mean, it's it's not a new problem. It's it's garbage in, garbage out. We've had this for yeah, as long as well, we've had data always. systems. Yeah. Uh, an AI system is going to give you exactly what you tell it to, and if you know if if you <laughs> tell it to review or summarize this, you know, load of BS, then it's going to summarize it for you well. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Yeah, we. we 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 also um we also had another team within the organization and this is what started the whole ai advisory thing right uh from the people who make the decisions um where our customer service department they were like well we use salesforce we've got hundreds of thousands of documented like questions and answers and so forth from customers so uh we should use that uh pump that into ai and see if we can create kind of like uh matching questions you might ask for specific products and then use it, find a way to um, connect that as a data source to our PIM. Did, does any, everyone familiar with PIM? PIM, Product Information yeah. Management Systems. Right, so basically- Honestly, that's, if you're gonna say PIM what... with a British accent, I'm thinking PIMS and we're, <laughs> and it's a Friday afternoon, so I'm really thinking Or, or Ant-Man uh, with a PIM <laughs> Industries. Yeah, I'm- no, that's it, I didn't think of that. Oh wow! Mm, okay, okay. And a cup. Yeah. <laughs> but I like it, D. I like it. I like it. Yeah, maybe night for sure, Friday. Yeah. So, so it makes it it makes it really interesting. But the problem that 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 they're having is that, to your point, Ben, the data's dirty. It's dirtier than the worst sins known to man. The worst sins that you see on Law and Order, Special Victims mm-hmm. Unit, that kind of sins. So they've got a lot of cleanup to do pretty rough <laughs> well and it's a, it's the ongoing arms race now because the ai like it's the ai systems are not good at recognizing ai generated content as we've started to see at least in the news i follow a lot of yep. like plagiarism or other types of things you see it in the university systems kids are getting accused of using ai whether they are or not and there's just the internet's going to be full, you know, 90% AI generated content or whatever these articles say. And it's like, well, then how do you learn to recognize what it is? So before we even worry about <laughs> summarizing. That it, was my worry we... from the very beginning, Ben, was my, you know, as a, as an artist and as a photographer, um, yeah. you know, the writers were the first ones, I think, to complain, you know, about that. But, you know, it's yeah. the whole thing of, especially like with some of the illustrator stuff, oh, this style. Well, then they're just, you know, grabbing some artist, you know, stuff uh, from out there yeah. and making it yeah. you know, into that style. The... Yeah, there, there was an yeah, illustrator. Societal and ethical concerns of compensation for your work and, yeah. and so forth. You yeah, there, there, there was a, uh, an illustrator, quite famous international artist, who uh, does a lot of stuff where she was covering the conflict in Ukraine. 
And she found out to her horror that her style of art had been fed into these AI image generators and she was losing contracts because publications yeah. are going, what do I need to pay you for? I can just push a button and get this. That's, that's the, that's the bad path yeah. for all of us. Yeah. Well, and there are numerous lawsuits pending, at least here within the U S and it'll be, you know, if anyone else listens to uh, anyone else, a verge cast or a verge reader, and it's, it's one of the websites and they're constantly talking about basically this sort of Damocles that's hanging over the entire AI industry in yeah. that depending on how the laws come down or the lawsuits decide on what's fair use of training data. So a lot mm -hmm. of these systems could be undone with, you know, a, a single ruling. Um, so it'll be interesting and turbulent and probably terrifying for the next, you know, for the conceivable future until we figure out some kind of framework for mm -hmm. how do these things actually work within the, the industries. By the way, there was if you a want demo. Something... Go ahead. Oh, sorry, David. Uh, there was a demo that um, uh, one of my uh, Adobe friends was doing for Illustrator, um, where it was like, "Hey, here's my artwork. Now, mm -hmm. you know, kind of copy, you know, my artwork." But I was like, "Oh, well, then you could put freaking anybody's artwork in there, and it would copy, yeah. you know, that is like." Well, they did it at least, you know, the right way. But it, the, the minute they said my artwork, I thought anybody's artwork. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there is that the, the training data. I mean, I, I run a, you know, my my home lab and I've thought about spinning up one of these, the, you know, the the small models or whatnot and just basically feeding it my emails and be like, I wonder how accurately it could represent like my style of communication or whatnot because there is a lot of value in that proposition of oh it'd be nice if it could automate like some of me of what i do but there's always that danger then that oh but someone else is going to automate you so it's well uh, true now like for alvin um and aaron um who was you know playing designer um you know like if you're creating let's say a set of icons mm -hmm. it could help you get the same you know look and feel as the first you know set or the you know the first ones that you did in theory right yeah yeah hmm. nightmare scenarios thanks oh, mark you... oh you out of here all right yeah <laughs> uh, for, as far as nightmare scenarios, y'all saw the the story about the Google employees who got fired for protesting yes. about how the AI was being used. Yes. Oh. When I dove a little deeper into there, I was like, "Wait a minute, what the fuck?" Yeah. Where the AI was targeting Palestinians because they were members of WhatsApp groups. Yeah. And that's why they were targeting them for extermination. And I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, oh, hold on. We got to get this thing back on the leash. Uh, I, I get why these people are like, we got, we get, hang on, no. Um, that That's one where the alphabet agencies and defense agencies and what have you using AI to, you know, what was that? Uh, uh, this a couple of years ago, the movie that was making the rounds on YouTube about all the little buzzing drones that were coming in and killing all the people in the auditorium. And I was choosing the ones who were the opposite political party. You all see that one? Pretty nasty. Anyway. Go ahead. Wasn't, what was that? That was. Yeah, yeah I'll see if we can find it. But uh, uh, nightmare scenarios for, for AI usage abound, unfortunately. Um, a lot of people with imagination uh, go all dark mirror on this. Um, well, but, yeah, but they don't even have to be violent for it yeah. to be bad. I mean, okay, you set our high-speed trading algorithms. You feed one into an AI and just give it the budget, and it goes wild and makes some crazy decision and dumps us into a recession or a depression because it tanked the, the stock market. I mean, there's, there's so many ways that a hands-off AI could mess with our system, and it wouldn't even... you. <laughs> it's i i think all of these discussions have been 
so far it's the you need to keep humans in the loop as the yeah. the final step of before you do anything is there a, you oh, know that sanity for sure. check yeah <laughs> Because all, you know, so many of these, it's like, yeah, it's a very powerful tool and can be used for, for good or for evil. <laughs> as with, as yeah. with everything that we've never invented. Bots. It's like... <laughs> yeah, Slaughterbots video. It's, it's one I was making the, the rounds a, a couple of years ago. I don't remember. Uh, that wasn't the one I was thinking of, ago. apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, th th that one made an impression. Um, and <laughs> and we have arrived at it. <laughs> Elvin, um, I know a while back you were playing with some of the music generating ones. Are those still are, have those gotten any better? Or are you still you still with us? You did go screen blank, so you may be stuck on another call as well. <laughs> it's a Friday. Okay. Didn't know what happened. In the in the ongoing rap beef between Kendrick Lamar, um, Drake, and J. Cole, there oh, were yeah. a bunch of like deep fakes of their oh, verses yeah. against each other. Like, oh yeah, it was a huge thing the last like couple of weeks. Yeah, the deep fake. I mean, we haven't really talked about that much at all. And no, just, that's, that's frightening. Yeah, Alvin, we sorry, we were. I was being paged. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't checked back in with the music making ones, band to your question. So, I, I have heard some of the fake verses floating around, but uh, yeah, so. Ben Parsley was also asking because I also DJ. So there are some there now there is a, a new DJ tool, but it's it's supposed to basically help you build sets out. It's like, oh mm -hmm. give it some genre, give it some some, you know, it's kinda like Spotify, but it's kinda like what Spotify does on steroids, so not <laughs> not too bad. But yeah, I do want to kind of take a look at it, kind of see what's going on. Interesting. I never thought about that one. Okay, I'm going for my real deep nerd cut. Is any <laughs> any other Star Trek folks in here? Data, way back TNG, when he was mm -hmm. trying to learn to paint, and he expressed, you know, it was like, well, what do you, I don't know if it was Riker or Jordy asking, well, what is it? He's like, well, this is, it's supposed to be the abstraction of creativity or whatnot. I don't even remember what the painting was, but it's mm -hmm. very much just a computer system trying, uh, and not the data, it's just a computer system. It, but nonetheless, it's the it's something that is inherently non-creative, trying to be creative. And it feels like that's what we're trying to force a lot of these AI systems to do when all they're really, as has been said multiple times, they're just spitting out what they've already seen. So you're not going to get that the, the brand new highfalutin concepts, but we can automate a lot of our, hey, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Let's yeah, I did watch Terminator last night. Works. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's not the one to prepare for an AI conversation. <laughs> Good Lord. Or is it? Or is it? Well, which Terminator? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm trying to find one. I, I, I'm going to follow up with everybody here by posting some stuff, some resources that I've run across. There was an extremely talented writer who really deconstructed how useful AI really is to the creative process. Um, and she had this wonderful paragraph that sticks in my head that said back when she was a waitress, she talked with the other waitresses about, you know, the waitress voice which is, you know, slightly higher in pitch and you're talking to the person as if they're kind of stupid. And that that's basically the voice that the AI uses on all of us right now. Yeah, thank you so much. And was that up to your satisfaction, sir? <laughs> Would you like another I, cocktail? I remember back at IBM when we first started using, um, you know, like for a chat bot, I mean, this is early, you know, earlier days of of chatbots and, and especially in healthcare, it really mm -hmm. became a huge ethics um, issue, right? Because you've got to let them know that they're not talking, you know, to a real human. Oh. Now it's, it's, you know, but this is, this was the early days, right? So it was, it was really kind of a, a big deal. Um, uh, Aaron and I's friend, um, 
Astrid ended up doing a talk for O'Reilly on AI for ethics. Oh, nice. But that was what started that, you know, whole conversation was, you know, the, the stupid chatbot that we were working on was, you know, especially, you know, like uh, Aaron and I were both at Mayo and where our the the normal person is between 60 and 80. Right. So you've mm. got to assume some things, you know, like you if they don't know that they're talking, you know, they they're, they could be easily feel like they're misinformed or that they're, you know, being like slighted in some way hmm. um, that they're not getting the right information. Hmm. Ben has this weird um, smirk on his face. What are you thinking, Ben? <laughs> I mean, I, a lot of this again is coming back to, I, I think AI, it could give us so much potential in our society if a lot of what we depend on in our daily lives weren't so tied to our current careers or jobs. It's So I, the Bob's office space, it's like yeah. consultants. A lot of what we've done is you come in and you're like, okay, who can you fire? Who can we replace with the system? And as in the consulting world, is AI it's what well, it is already becoming that trend of who can we come in and as someone who theoretically is helping to build out a design you know an ai system or whatnot it's the it's those ethical implications i already struggled with them in before ai systems just in general of whenever we're designing a new system it's like okay what are you what are you doing for the folks that we're displacing what what's our responsibility there and this is just another flavor of that of i don't know how i feel about building out systems that the company's going to turn around and fire someone well he wouldn't um, have to ask anybody i, I don't want to i don't want to go report. full luddite i'm sorry he wouldn't have to ask anybody for the tps report at least <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it, it is i don't want to go full luddite and say we can't develop new technologies but it is you got to find a way to strike that balance of yeah that these are tools that can help folks out but let's make sure that we're not <laughs> headed down that dystopian road which which is always my my swing line stapler you don't take that away <laughs> burn, burn the whole place down the red swing line that didn't exist before that movie i think you might be uh asking asking for a lot there ben you know it's like oh don't get me wrong yeah i know it, it, like i said the last yeah i know i feel like a lot of uh, innovations have replaced manual effort right this yeah. one, and I don't. It's replacing cognitive effort now, right? So, nice onyx. So, yeah. <laughs> <gotta> love <laughs> so I think it it makes it a little uh, trickier. Yeah. But to your point, I, you know, I don't think anyone's. Well, I know unless you want to count Andrew Yang a couple of years ago was like, hey, we should have a a way to. Oh count. yeah, UBI. No, I'm I'm all not full of it. If you want to go full leftist socialist talk on the benefits of the downfalls of AI, I can I can have that discussion with you. Oh, but, smash the state. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's it, and that's been true of every technological revolution. I mean, you look back at those old the old ads from like the the fifties and sixties of the hey, here's what the kitchen of the future or the house of the future, and it's going to save you all this time or whatnot and you'll have so much more leisure time and you only have to work you know one you know those week. refrigerators and whatnot are still better than the ones they've got today by the way <laughs> according to the indiana to jones them. movie we can survive a nuclear blast in one of them yeah well, we do know and that massive physical and kinetic you know energy apparently because he got flung in that thing and survived so they're they're pretty magical oh, who knew but I thought you'd be pink yellow. <laughs> uh, yes, Alvin, that is that is my my continuing struggle of the I like cool toys and new technology, but I worry about the implications for what it means for those around us. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think it's time to kind of wrap this up. Um so um everybody, thank you um so much for um attending. And um, it was really nice to meet you, Alvin. 
Um, I had never met you before. Ben, I I think, I think we've been in uh, one of maybe, maybe. Darren's uh, meetings uh, before. I, you, I, you look really familiar to me, so... <laughs> What bald white guy with a beard? No, I mean we're we're so unique. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I would I remember you. Um, so uh, everybody have a great weekend, mm -hmm. um, and um, I'll hopefully see you next month. Hopefully, I will have a place to work from. <laughs> Do we want to have to a suggestion host. for a theme next month? Uh, sure. What do you got? Uh, anybody? What do we want to explore? The the AI one was the hot topic of the year. Um, what you got? Well, having not a, a, uh, oh, go ahead. AI in the job market, we kind of like never touched it at all. It's like it implies in everything else, but there's like one specific area where kind of like trying to figure out some some loopholes on the AI so that resumes can go through kind of deal <laughs> doing our right because I've, I've certainly used it to, to um redo my resume make it more succinct hmm. well grammar and pr grammar it's kind of like i think it's 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 great because the rules of grammar are pretty much set so that's that using ai for grammar i i feel it's like fair game yeah but i tend to be a little wordy shocking i know mm -hmm. um but uh yeah so i i've used it to help condense so, uh, maybe something to do with portfolio because every time I mention portfolio around any designers, everybody looks down at their shoes and goes, I haven't meaning to deal with that. <laughs> Unless you come you out know, of one of the, the boot camps or the, the schools these days where it seems like the entire last senior year of their program is, you know, spent building out a portfolio. <laughs> I already got, it's, it's like, I still have a list of to do things from the last two reviews that I haven't gotten to those yet. So I will be yeah, very Onyx miserable if they just, if I just go through it again and like telling me the thing says, I know I need to do that. I need to do that to make it more like a story. Um, I know. So now Onyx, that's where Aaron for, went. For AI. Um, <laughs> Aaron went to Bentley as well, right? Oh, Aaron? Sure did. Also, yeah. plus one for having Lumberg in the background there. I'm going to need yeah. you to come in on uh, Saturday. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's rushing me to get the TPS report now, so I gotta go. Yeah, we all gotta go. All right. Uh, you you posting this video online somewhere, D? What do you think? I will. Um, yeah, I'll post the video in the in the comments um, as soon as I as soon as I get it. Um, it's nice Bye. seeing everybody. Have a great yep. weekend. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.